Hi, my name is Eric Haynes with NVIDIA, and this talk is about the rendering equation. I'd like to start with a quote from Roman Payne. The muse is not an artistic mystery, but a mathematical equation. And this is really good for the rendering equation. The rendering equation, it's not a rendering equation, it's the rendering equation. It really sums up how light gets to the eye. And I can already see your eyes drooping, in fact, because you've just seen an equation put on a slide, and oh my gosh, what are we doing? This is, if you're gonna have one equation in your life, make it this one if you're into computer graphics. It has a few terms in it. It all looks a, a bit like much, but we'll break it down in this lesson and you'll find it's really worthwhile. It gives you this tool where you can think about how light works, what effects you wanna do, what effects you wanna leave behind. So to start with, there's a bunch of inputs for the rendering equation, which is there's a point, x, which is some point in the scene. And that's the point, let's say, that you're looking at. And there's an outgoing direction, which is this omega hat, that W looking thing, omega hat out, O sub O. And that's an outgoing direction. So it's basically a direction, say, towards the eye. There's also an incoming direction, which if you look at the far right of the equation, you see an omega hat I. And that's just some light is coming in from some other direction. There's the surface normal. If you have a flat surface, say uh, the floor, the normal is the direction pointing straight up for example. And then finally, there's this S squared term, which means it's all incoming directions. So we're gonna be evaluating this piece on the right for all incoming directions. Light is coming in from a bunch of different directions. Uh, how do they affect what we finally see from our eye? The terms in this equation, the first two are really easy. The outgoing light on the far left, that's basically saying, given a point and given an outgoing direction, what light do I see? In other words, I'm looking in a direction at some point. Well, what light is coming from that point? To start with, there's the emitted light, which is a function that looks just about the same. It basically says, given a point and given an outgoing direction, what light is coming from that point? So if you have a light source, a lot of light is coming out from there, and that just shines right into your eye. And if everything in the world was a light source, then we'd be done. We wouldn't have to think about any of the equation to the right. Where the right equation comes in, it has an incoming light, a material, and this Lambert geometric term. So the incoming light is basically saying, okay, given a point and given some direction, what do I see in that direction? What light is coming from that direction? The material equation is just simply a function that says, okay, given an incoming and an outgoing direction, what light goes in the outgoing direction. So in other words, like a mirror, for example, will be very reflective in one direction. So the incoming and the outgoing directions are closely related. But other surfaces, many different incoming directions will give a different term, different amount of light bouncing off the surface. And then finally, there's this Lambert term, which is this incoming direction times the normal. And that's a geometric term, and I'll show what that means. What happens with the Lambert cosine law, it's an old idea, and it's just simply something that's kind of intuitively true, that if a light's directly overhead, it's going to have the most effect on a surface, but as you tilt the light, the effect of that light is gonna be less and less as it gets to the horizon. So on the far right of this, you can see how the light kind of spreads out as we get to this shallower angle, and that's all that term is. And this is just another visualization of that term, where it's showing how it decreases over angle. So what pure path tracing does is it basically says, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sum up the light in all directions, and that's what's gonna to go towards the eye. So in path tracing, what we do is we kind of shoot a ray, and then we shoot another ray off that surface in some other direction. So with path tracing, what we did is shoot a ray from the eye and hits this box, and then from there, it scatters out rays in various directions. So each path is a different direction. One may go up and hit the sky, another one may go and hit the ground and that bounces somewhere else, and so on and so forth. And we add up all the contributions of those paths to get the color at the eye. The trick with this is that we don't really know in a given direction what the light is. Sometimes we do, if we look directly at the sun, well, we know what that is, but often we'll hit something else. And so the rendering equation is actually a recursive equation. It's one where it says, well, what's the incoming light direction and intensity rather from a direction? Well. We don't know, so what we have to do is use the rendering equation, again, on the place that we just hit. So if I hit the box and then I hit the cylinder, we'd apply the rendering equation at the cylinder, and so on and so forth until we finally get an answer. The trick with that is that if you did a pure path trace, it's 
a very slow process to converge if you don't have a big light source. Like, so if you didn't have, for example, the sky so that, you know, when a ray hits the sky, you're done, you could be in trouble. Like if you just have a small light source in the scene, pure path tracing says, well, I'm gonna bounce my rays around until I hit a light. And that's a problem, because if the light's small, that could be a very, very long number of bounces. There's things that we do about this. One is called importance sampling, and it basically says, there's gotta be good directions for me to go shoot my rays in. Let's see what they are. One approach with importance sampling is to just look at the effect of the material. So we take that Lambert term, and we take the material function, where it has an incoming and an outgoing direction, which if you wanna impress people at cocktail parties is the bidirectional scattering distribution function, the BSDF. And all that is is a fancy way of saying, well, when light comes in from this direction, what effect does it have on the material? For example, if the material is black, well, there's not gonna be any outgoing light. Um, but in general, there's some outgoing term that will uh, respond to different directions. With a mirror, for example, it's clear that the outgoing direction is gonna basically be a reflection direction from the incoming direction. And that's the only direction that really matters to us. So if we're path tracing and we hit a perfect mirror, we can just always shoot our ray out in that direction and feel good about life because we know that light from different directions is not gonna really matter too much. For a glossy surface where it's got like a sheen, then you might shoot out a burst of rays. And so for each path, you might choose a different ray and decide to go one way or the other and so on, and that adding up all those paths should give you a pretty good result. Finally, you have something like a diffuse or a matte surface, like unglazed pottery or cement or things like that, where light can be coming in from all different directions and contribute to the outgoing direction. And there you're doing more of like a Lambert's Law kind of a distribution. You're going in all different directions, however you want. Again, that can be expensive, so there's yet another way that we go to try to reduce the load. It's called multiple importance sampling. And here we say, well, okay, we will vary by the material, but we also wanna vary using the light direction. So if we know that there's an important light source in the room, or if we know that there's the suns out there or something like that, we'll also add that in as an important place to shoot rays, basically. So instead of just shooting them kind of randomly, we'll say, oh, also shoot some rays towards that light, because I know that light's gonna be a really important direct lighting effect. But it's also worthwhile to shoot the these other rays because we want to catch some of the indirect lighting. So in a mirror reflection or a glossy or diffuse, it's all sort of the same idea. We're going to try to shoot a bunch at the light, and we might weight them by how much they'll matter. That the diffuse one, it's going to matter perhaps more, the reflection one perhaps less because we really mostly care about what's in the reflection direction. So I will not go through this image, but it's really worth looking at this image of multiple importance sampling. It's from a classic paper, 1995, and you can try to think this one through. Consider this your quiz, is shininess is varying. At the top, there are a bunch of light sources, and the radius of those light sources is increasing in each one of the three figures. And in one, we're just sampling the light source, and in another, we're sampling this BRDF, which is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function, and that's like the scattering function, but it's meant for surfaces, and it's for things that are opaque, not like glass. And then you have this MIS, multiple importance sampling, where you're doing both. And you can see that both is better, basically, and this is a good one to try to think through of why do some of these images look fuzzy. If Once you understand that, then you've got a level of enlightenment on the rendering equation. So as an example of path tracing, NVIDIA picked up some open source code from some researchers who were looking at Quake 2, an old game, but they decided, well, now that we have ray tracing acceleration, let's do a path trace version of it, like really crank up the good lighting and materials and so on. And it makes a dramatic difference. You know, it's the same assets, but just improving the lighting alone can really make the game shine, literally. And now you've got the rendering equation under your belt. It's really honestly a wonderful tool for thinking about lighting and how it percolates through a scene and what you care about. For further resources, see the website. And I also want to mention that there's this book called Ray Tracing Gems that's downloadable for free. <laughs>